It was the 6th of December. Operation Enduring Freedom is set to ramp up the invasion of Afghanistan after the 9-11 attacks. With two months in, the U.S. government has enough intel to set up Operation Tora Bora to capture or kill Osama bin Laden, the man ultimately responsible for the attacks. Tora Bora, meaning Black Cave, is located in the Safid Ko mountain range in eastern Afghanistan. It's near Khyber Pass in Pakistan and serves as one of the most strategic pass-throughs between the countries. The U.S. believes that the headquarters of Al-Qaeda can be found in this specific area. All the reason to send in Delta Force and smoke Bin Laden out of his cave. Welcome to the Spy Network. Forty operators of Delta Force's Alpha Squadron were deployed to assist the CIA and Green Beret teams. With Delta, several members of the British Special Boat Service were attached in common interest by both governments to kill the world's most sought-after nefarious terrorist. As part of Operation Cyclone, the CIA has been assisting and training the Mujahideen. They specifically helped them to take advantage of their countless caves and fight off the invasion of Russia as this was a great natural defensive position. As the U.S. supported their effort, the Taliban was forming and gaining ground in the area. They took most of the country as a result. The Battle At the end of 2001, Al-Qaeda fighters were still holding out in the mountains of the Tora Bora region. Aerial bombardment continued, including the use of large bombs known as daisy cutters. This bomb was especially known for its long fuse, making it possible to explode at or above the ground. On December 3, 2001, a group of 20 CIA Special Activities Division operators and 5th Special Forces Group formed ODA-572, codenamed Jawbreaker. They were deployed by helicopter in Jalalabad, Afghanistan to launch an operation against them. Afghan Northern Alliance fighters took control of the low terrain beneath the mountain caves from Al-Qaeda fighters on December 5, 2001. The Jawbreaker Squad and SF teams armed with laser designators called in Air Force bombers to take out targets. This resulted in 72 hours of non-stop heavy airstrikes, including laser-guided bombs and missiles. Al-Qaeda forces retreated to more reinforced locations and dug in for the fight. A week later, a total of 70 Special Forces operatives from the Army Delta Forces A Squadron and the Air Force Special Tactics Squadron arrived by vehicle overland to assist the bombing operation with ground forces. As a part of their team, they had 12 battle-hardened Special Boat Service operators and at least one operative from MI6. These operatives would be drafted into small teams, mainly carrying out signals intelligence to reveal the fighters' positions to later conduct airstrikes. However, during the night, Al-Qaeda members would light campfires revealing their precise location and assisting laser-designated targeting for air-launched missiles which would eliminate them instantly. It was the 16th of December that a Delta Recon team call sign Jackal spotted a tall man wearing a camouflage jacket. The operation was ongoing for several days now, and they were certain bin Laden had been located. The operators were near his suspected location when they noticed a group of fighters enter the cave, led by a taller figure dressed in flowing white robes. This was bin Laden's usual appearance. Although this was not the best intel, they worked with what they had. When an ally warlord ordered a halt, he stated that Al-Qaeda fighters nearby were attempting to surrender and that he was discussing terms. When the Delta operators attempted to press ahead, their Afghan advisors turned their firearms on them, indicating that the warlord was stalling to allow bin Laden to flee. Six bombs were dropped on the cave entrance during an hour-long standoff. Bin Laden was believed to have been wounded but not killed. Later DNA tests confirmed that his body had not been part of the fighters that were found. Later intelligence had confirmed that bin Laden had escaped into Pakistan, the very thing they wanted to prevent from the start. Politics, logistics, troop placement, and the time appointed to carry out the mission were detrimental to this operation, ultimately resulting in bin Laden getting away. But how? Lessons Learned well, not enough troops and not enough aircraft were two of the reasons. 
Looking at the map of Tora Bora, you might understand the challenge they faced. Most of the aircraft could not safely operate on and in the altitudes that the SF operators had to deal with, and the harsh terrain posed a significant challenge for them. Not being native and local to the area also didn't help. Their enemies were local and had an advantage over the operators. Most of the time, they were severely outnumbered too, as Al-Qaeda forces grew to well over a thousand fighters. By December of 2001, there were 1,500 troops in Afghanistan, but most of them were scattered throughout the country and having different focus areas. Not to mention the logistics. Imagine a thousand troops flowing into the Tora Bora region. It would take the aircraft to carry those troops and all that comes with it. And they needed to be trained for it. Capable of effectively operating in this terrain would definitely require training. They would need housing, food, and their base needed to be secured. Medical specialists, maintenance, ammo, fuel. These were all great challenges and just simply not possible to set up properly within the time frame they were given. There was also another problem with the operation. It was conducted during Ramadan. Afghan Northern Alliance allies would descend the mountains every night to pray and break fasting. To conclude, the operation had been under heavy criticism. Who sends under 100 SF operators to such an environment, heavily outnumbered and outgunned? The CIA operators who were coordinating with the White House requested a thousand Army Rangers. General Mattis of the U.S. Marine Corps requested to send 1,200 Marines, but both suggestions were blown into the wind. Again, politics played a big role in this operation, all to great dissatisfaction of the deltas on the ground. Reflecting back on the mission, leaders also recalled a heavy reliance on the government of Pakistan to close down their borders, capturing al-Qaeda fighters as they try to escape. Drone footage taken showed the Pakistani soldiers accepted bribes and allowed the fighters a safe passage. They did not take into account that the tribal native forces have a bond that is stronger than anything. The Battle of Tora Bora was a partial success. Bin Laden had managed to escape, but not unscathed. His stronghold was destroyed, and his ability to organize attacks was crippled. This would mean he would constantly stay on the run, fearing of being caught again. The mission had shifted the power balance in the region, impacting the morale across the country. They gained some strategic success, and it helped to advance the U.S. position within Afghanistan. If you like what we're doing here, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon to never miss a new video. Thank you for watching and see you all in the next video.